In our previous video, we talked about electrical resistance. Let's do a quick recap. Can you define resistance? Resistance is the measure of how much current is opposed in an electrical circuit. Resistance is inversely proportional to current and its SI unit is ohm. That's correct. And what is a circuit? Uh, it is a circular path through which electricity flows. Yes, that's correct. And you know, a circuit has more than one component, such as conducting wire, power source, key, also known as switch, and resistance. You also know that these resistors can be connected in two different ways, in series and in parallel. In today's session, we will be talking about resistance in series. So, let's start. If we take three resistors, say R1, R2 and R3 and connect them in a series and then to complete the circuit, we connect it through these connecting wires to a power source. In this case, it is a battery. The resistors are said to be connected in series. Why? Because they are connected one after the another in a sequence and the current flows through them without any interruption. Now, we will see an illustration. Would you please draw this one? Yes. Why is there no interruption? Because, as you can see, there is only one path for this current to flow. So it starts from here, it flows through here, goes to R1, R2, R3, and then back here. So the current is not dividing anywhere, it's just going in a straight flow. So to understand the concept better, Let's look into a couple of analogies. Let's use a couple of analogies. As you can see, I have three models here. Let me explain them to you. The first one of course is a simple circuit that has three resistors R1, R2 and R3. Current flows through each of them. Now, let's move on to our next model. This unique model represents a water pump system. It has a pump attached at the bottom. The pump pushes the water up to the top from where it flows down through the wheel making them turn and finally it flows down to the bottom. Let's call these wheels W1, W2 and W3. The third model is a game ride. It has one way elevated, as you can see. People can use it to go up on the top. But to come down, they have to go through the staircase, the ladder, and through the hole. And all these trees are located at a different level. So what do you think? Is there any similarity between these three models? Yes. In the water pump system model, three wheels are attached in series and in the game ride model also, the staircase, the ladder and the pole are connected in a sequence that's one after the other. Good observation. If you look at the second model, when the water gets pumped up to the top, there is only one path for it to come down through wheel one to wheel 2 and wheel 3. In model 3, people ride up using the elevator to the top and then they come down using the staircase, the ladder and via the pole. There is only one part. Coming back to the circuit, you can see the same trend. There is only one path for the current to flow through register 1 to register 2 and then through register 
3. In all these three cases, there is only one path through which the current, the water and the people can pass. Now, let's have a closer look at the water pump. Suppose 10 liters of water gets pumped up to the top. What do you think? How much water will go through each wheel? 10 liters? That's right. The amount will be the same. 10 liters of water that passes through wheel 1 will also pass through wheel 2 and then through wheel 3. Similarly, in the third model, if 10 people go up the elevator, the same 10 people will come down the staircase, the ladder and the pole. Now let's get back to the circuit. Suppose if 10 ampere of current flows in the circuit, the same 10 ampere will flow through register 1, then register 2 and through register 3. So what's the key takeaway? When the registers are connected in series, the amount of current that passes through each register will be same. So suppose for example, I is the amount of current coming out of the battery, then I will be equal to I1, I2 and I3. In other words, we can also write I is equal to I1 equals I2 equals I3. And this is true for any number of registers. So it can be go all the way. Okay, I get it. But I have a question. What about the voltage? That's a very good question. As you know, the voltage is provided by the cell. Let's go back to our numbers. First, to the water pump system. Suppose 10 liters of water is being pumped up. When the water reaches on the top, it will have the maximum gravitational potential energy compared to when it was at the bottom. Why is the gravitational potential energy maximum at the top? Because of its position, that is the height. Oh, okay. So here, the pump is supplying the potential energy to the water. Yes? Now, as we as it starts to flow down, it starts losing its potential energy. As you know, when the height decreases, the potential energy decreases too. So water will lose some of its energy in wheel 1, some in wheel 2, and then some in wheel 3. Tell me, how the wheels are arranged? Wheels are arranged at different heights. Right. As the wheels are at different heights, the amount of the energy lost by each of them will be different, correct? Yes. It is difficult to say how much energy will each wheel lose. But we know that the total amount of energy lost in wheel 1, wheel 2 and wheel 3 will be equal to the total energy that is provided by the pump. Let me explain it to you again. Look at the game right elevator. Number of people going up the elevator will have maximum potential energy when they reach the top because of its position. As they start coming down, they start losing energy. Some of it will be lost while going down the stairs, some of it will get lost when they are going down the ladder and some while sliding down the pole. Amount of energy loss will be different on each level because of its height difference. We may not know how much energy is lost in each level, but we do know that the sum of the total energy lost in all the three levels will be equal to the amount of energy given to the people provided by the elevator. Suppose 2000 joules energy is provided by the elevator. This 2000 joules may not be divided equally in all three levels due to the height difference. But the total amount lost in each, that is the staircase, the ladder and the pole will be equal. Can the same concept be applied to the circuit? Yes, we can apply the same concept. 
here the potential energy which is basically the voltage that is provided by the battery is exactly the same as the potential gravitational potential energy supplied by the pump so what is voltage voltage is the potential difference between two points in an electric field that's right and some of this energy is lost when it flows through resistor 1 to register 2 and some of it in register 3 and so on again we may not know how much voltage is lost in each register but we do know this that the sum of total energy lost by all the three registers has to be equal to the amount of voltage that is supplied by the battery so if v is the voltage provided by the battery then the voltages in register r1 r2 and r3 will be v1 plus v2 plus v3 so total v will be equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 so what's the key take away from the analogies that we used today when resistors are connected in series the current remains the same but the voltages add up right right 